It is amazing to me that it seems like every Sunday I stand up here, I see more individuals filling these seats. And I know it is God. And your desire to be in his presence. Today I want to start off by saying thank you to God and thank you to all of those of you who have prayed. Um, <clears throat> Sister Janice, we've been praying for her, we've been praying for Deacon Peck, been praying for Sister Janice and, and Deacon Harris. Uh, Sister Janice, I um, think she left to go home with her daughter uh, either Thursday or Friday. And um, she's better. But we need to keep praying. At least she's going home. And then for Deacon Harris, I had Deacon here who has been out. Uh, today would have been a month. The Lord brought him back home. Uh, was it Friday? And he's in our midst. He's sitting here today in the midst. Isn't God good? Won't he answer prayer? Is there a healing? Is there a bomb in Gilead? <laughs> we need to keep praying, but he's here and he's doing well. Encouragement to my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we just want to be we thankful and grateful to God. I want you to remember um, as we continue to talk about this pandemic, it seems as though the numbers are going the wrong way. But, you know, when you have, when you have selfish, hard-headed folk that don't understand the, the, the will of God and understand how God, uh, through the vaccine, has made a way for us to beat this thing, you have folk that want to do what they want to do. And so that's the times we're living in. And so we're not just talking about and being advocates of, of uh, people getting their vaccinations. We're saying that uh, we, 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 we're not saying that we need you to get them, but we're saying that we're going to help in some way. And so God has opened a door. He has opened a door for us to help. And so I want to announce, and we're going to be announcing this all the way through August the 7th. I want to announce to you that Baptist Health and Family Life Bible Fellowship Church will partner in a community vaccine clinic on August the 7th, uh, 2021, uh, for the first dose. And it will be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. here in our fellowship hall. And I want you to understand that additional information will be coming. Uh, so you can visit our website for more information, uh, www.familylifebfc.org. So you want you to understand we're not just talking, but we're part partnering with uh, Baptist Health. And I um, want to thank God for, for Melissa, Sister uh, Melissa Cleveland, yeah. who has been the contact person that has made this happen. And she's on fire. She's excited. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to, she's going to be coming uh, here, uh, coming uh, forth in the future because we've asked her to uh, head up our medical ministry. And uh, we just, God is just blessing us with what we need in the house. So we want you to bear all of these announcements in mind and want you to understand that we are advocates for what is right and we stand with God and we stand in the community to demonstrate what God has called us to do. Is that all right? And so last week, somebody, somebody was excited last week, and I was excited too because we found out that, that through the power of God that we were unstoppable. Any, anybody run over some devils this past week? <laughs> Anything get in your way where you said, aha, I got you. I got something on you today. Come on with your bad self. I found out last Sunday that I was plain old, simply unstoppable. So bring what you got. Bring what you got. Bring what you got. Today I want to talk to you about the fact that we are unstoppable by the anointing. Unstoppable because of the anointing. Some, turn and tell somebody, I'm, in, I'm unstoppable because of the anointing.
when you look in the Bible and when you look in today's society, we see that when God wants to use somebody, he does not select the best according to the world's standards and benchmarks. He does not seek after the highly intelligent, the most skillful, the wealthiest, nor the well experienced. But what he does is he goes after and he calls and he handpicks everyday, ordinary, simple people. So if you think that you need to be real smart and know a lot of things and have a, 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 a multiple skill set and you just need to have a lot of experience, I stopped by to tell you that's not what God is looking for. He's looking for a yielded vessel that he can anoint. He's looking for somebody that will say yes. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, God is looking for somebody that's plain old, uh, 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 just going on about their business and love him, have an intimate relationship with him, will do what he asks him to do, will walk in obedience, will walk in faith, will always check in with him before they do something, is willing to carry out his purposes and plans in this earth, willing to do his will. That's who God is looking for and when he finds that individual he doesn't mind by the Holy Ghost anointing them I need you to understand that you are anointed and you are anointed because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you now the Holy Spirit can be on the inside of you but you still not be anointed the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you by way of the person and you have all everything you need as far as capabilities, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are anointed. And so you have to understand that the anointing, the unction of the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the presence of God comes so that God can use you to do what he needs to be done in this earth. And so we see that God does not. He does not. The Amplified in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. It states this, it says, For simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. It's Peter talking. Peter said, I need y'all to understand, brethren, that God has saved us. He's kept us. He's delivered us. We're the preach brethren and he's using us. But I need you to check your credentials out. And he's saying you got to consider your own call, brother. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to the human estimates and standards. Not many influential and powerful. Not many of high and noble birth. Hallelujah. We weren't born to kings and queens and noble men. He goes on to say, but God, and, and, and I want you to understand that, but God chooses everyday average and ordinary people like you and me when he wants to use somebody for his glory. Aren't you glad? Amen. <laughs> Verse 27 says, no, that, that, that God, didn't, God didn't choose the influential and the powerful and the, and the high and noble birth. Verse 7, 27 says, no, for God selected, deliberately chose. He deliberately chose. Folk were picking over you and talking about you, saying you weren't going to amount to nothing. You didn't have the abilities. You didn't have the wherewithal. You looked different from all the other children. You acted strange. The Bible says God deliberately picked over. He deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. He took somebody like me that didn't know much and didn't look like nothing and said, I'm going to dress him up. I'm going to put my spirit in him. I'm going to anoint him and he's going to give me the glory. So when man look at him, they know there had to be a God in heaven to help this fellow out. 
There had to be a God in heaven to do through him what he's able to do. And if you want to tell the truth, you know that God has anointed you to be unstoppable. And the way you are able to do all that you do is because of him and not you. So don't look for folk to pat you on the back. Look for God to say, well done. Don't look for credit. Don't don't look. No, I, I, I know. And then there are some of us that God has blessed and anointed us to do so many things. And, and we still were looked over and picked over. Some of you have been a blessing and anointing in some areas. You've been a blessing to your company, blessing to your family and friends. And they don't still don't want to give you no credit. And they still don't want to say God did it through you. That's fine. Don't you know when God uses you, he also blesses you? Don't you know when God uses you, uh, the law of sowing and reaping is applied when he uses you to sow and you are blessing to others and you do his will and purposes. Do you understand that that comes back to you 60, 80, 100 fold? Do you not understand that you just need to make up in your mind that you're going to continue to do the will of God? Just continue to do his will. And so he says. The Bible says he did this. It says in God, verse 28, and God also selected, deliberately chose what in the world is low born and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt. Even the, the things that are nothing. Did you see yourself in there anywhere? I just freed somebody from depression. I just helped somebody get a breakthrough because now you understand that it doesn't matter. About your birth. It doesn't matter about your insignificance. It doesn't matter about how people have branded you. I need somebody to hear me. Because the world, they always have an idea of what success should look like. The world always talking and sending messages and some liminal messages. And they have all these commercials out. And they're saying, this is what you need to do. And this is how you need to look. And this is what you need to have to be successful. They brand you. They say, they say that, that there's nothing to you. You'll never make it. You're in the wrong, you're at the wrong uh, 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 level. You're at the wrong job. You can't do it. You, you don't have the abilities. You are a waste of my time. Aren't you glad God says different? And he does this, he says, deliberately chose those with low-born, insignificant brand that treated with contempt. That he might depose. Depose, that means overthrow, dethrone, eliminate, and bring to nothing the things that are. So all of these smart folks, all of these rich people, Intelligent people, think tanks, wealthy, don't let them intimidate you because God with his anointing on your life is going to raise you up to make them look like God is using you right now. Folk, they are, the, the enemy is talking among themselves. Demons are talking among themselves and said, I thought I, I thought I'd hurt them so bad long time ago that they were not going to try to pop their heads back up to do anything. I thought I put my foot on that neck long time ago. I thought they gave up long time ago. I thought they were depressed so long until they'll never see light of day. But I see them right now. I see them anointed. I see them being used. I see them wiser than those who are in the world. I see them have more money than they should have ever had before in their life. I see them walking in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. I see them articulating. I see them them blessed I see them overcomers what in the world has happened I stopped by to tell you that it was his anointing it's his anointing it's the anointing it's the anointing it's the anointing it's the anointing 
Don't you start. Don't you better stop devaluing yourself. You better stop saying I can't do it. You better stop saying. You the one God wants. You the one God is looking for. You the one that God is banking on. You the one that God is holding up blessings ready to pour them out on you. Matter of fact, God allowed all that stuff to come against you to break you so that you could hear his voice to break you so that you can sit still long enough to hear him to break you so that you can get the noise out of your life to break you so you can get on the right track to break you so that you can come to your senses to break you so that you can say father i hear you now Yeah, we, yes, yes, we're living in perilous, rough times. We're living in times where we don't know what's going to happen the next day. But it's the anointing that breaks and destroys the yokes. It doesn't matter what come against you. So you have to understand, he said, so that, look what he says. He's done all this that he might depose, overthrow, dethrone, eliminate, and bring to nothing the things that are. Why? So that no mortal man, no human being should have pretense for glory and boast in the presence of God. So no human being can say. I did it. I got my education. I got my experience. I got my skills. And I did it. And so you ask the question again. How, how does God do it? How does God use you? Well he uses you. To his glory, when God gets ready to do something great, when God gets ready to do something big, when God gets ready to perform miracles, when he gets ready to bring about a change for the better, he uses everyday, average, and ordinary people here again like you and I. And he anoints us through the power of the Holy Ghost. And so you ask yourself, you ask yourself, what, 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 what is the anointing? The original or the origin of the anointing was from a practice of shepherds. That's what D David said. He anointed my hair with oil, my cup runneth over. You have to understand that back in the day when the shepherds were out in the field tending the sheep, there were lice and other insects. And they would often get into the wool of the sheep. And when they got near the sheep's head, they could burrow into the sheep's ears and kill the sheep. And so the ancient shepherds, they learned something. They, they learned that they could take the oil and pour the oil on the sheep's head. This made the wool slippery, making it impossible for insects to get near the sheep's ears because the insects, insects would slide off. Isn't that good? And so, and, and, and so from the anointing became... Uh, from this, the anointing became symbolic of blessings, protection, and empowerment. I wish I had somebody in here. And so the word anointing simply means to rub into or to smear upon. Jesus was smeared with the anointing. Specifically, uh, 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 the person, the presence, and power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing. Jesus was anointed. And, and you see the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Ghost demonstrated through the anointing. The anointing also demonstrates, here again, the presence, the power, and the purposes of God. And that's why I have to take you over to, to, to Luke chapter 4, verse 18, in the Amplified. Jesus proclaimed this in Luke, and, 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 and he said over here in Luke chapter 4, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is up on me. Now I need you to see yourself. I just told you God picked you. Because you were average and ordinary. And I need you to see yourself. If you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. I need you to understand. That you are not qualified for this. You are qualified for the presence. You are qualified for the power. You are qualified for the purposes of God. To move and operate in and through your life. The Bible says here. That the spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
the presence of God. Jesus was saying the presence of Almighty God is upon me. The anointing of Almighty God is upon me. The anointing of the Almighty God is on you right now. Those of you who are watching. Live stream, the anointing of God is on you right now. I don't care what you're doing, where you are. The anointing, if you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. He abides in you. And the anointing of the Almighty God is upon you right now. You got to know this. Because Jesus said, because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to do what? To demonstrate God's power in the earth. For what reason? To carry out his purposes of deliverance. Jesus said his anointing is upon me to do something. To preach. And so you have the presence of God. Which the anointing brings about the presence of God. And that's the spirit of God upon your life. That's the presence of God wherever you are. But he just doesn't. God just, just doesn't show up. Just. For theatrics and fanfare. He shows up for a reason. He shows up because he's going to demonstrate some power. And that's why we understand that the anointing comes in power. What kind of power? Power to do what? To break yokes. To destroy yokes. The power of God operating to undo heavy burdens to set the cap look at what he says he says to preach the good news the gospel to the what the poor the anointing comes to empower those that are poor to bring gospel to it says the good news the gospel to the poor he has sent me to announce release to the captives the anointing comes and he releases those that are bound up those that are held captive those that are held captive in their mind those that are held captive by their habits those that have that are held captive by substance abuse those that are held captive by demons and principalities the anointing of almighty God comes and breaks jokes it frees you up somebody's gonna break free after listening to this because you have been wrestling you have been fighting but I stopped by to tell you that the anointing of God has come to break every yoke in your life break every chain that has you bow he has come to deliver you if you would just receive it yeah. he's anointed me to, the, to, to preach the gospel to the poor to announce release to the captives and recover of sight to the blind we got a lot of spiritual blind folks walking around here they see but they don't see you see folk dying from, from not taking the vaccine. And you still talking about you don't want to take it. How blind can you be? You, 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 you need a breakthrough. You need a resetting of your mind. You need to understand that the devil doesn't give you anything to help you. So, so, how, so how are you going to say the vaccine going to hurt you when it's helped millions of folk? What's wrong with you? You need a breakthrough. You need the anointing of the almighty God to come in and set you free in your thinking. There, there are people dying. There are people dying that did not receive the vaccine. And on their last breath, they're saying they wish they had it. They wish they had it done something different. I want to submit to you that it's too late. Now is the time for you to listen. Now, now, now is the time for you to understand that the will of God and the power of God is moving through medicine. The medication you own now, you, you didn't go through all this stuff to, 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 to see if it was going to work for you. You got your prescription, went to the pharmacist and start taking it. You prayed over it and you took it. Well, why can't you go get your shot? Pray while they put that needle in your arm and go on and get it and make sure you have a card so you can go get your other one. And in the meantime, wear your mask. And while you wear your mask, continue to praise and worship God. And when you get fully vaccinated, make sure you still wear your mask because you got folk around here. 
they ain't thinking about trying to live. They ain't thinking about nothing but what they want to do. They're led by their flesh. They're led by what they want to do. They're led by a good time. They're led by their own desires with the selfish self. And so you got to have the anointing of God up in your life to show you who to be around, to show you where to go, to stop you from going to several places, to help you to overcome. And if you come in contact with it, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing will teach you all of this. The anointing, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. We had an experience not too long ago where we talked to two individuals and we walked up and we knew them. And one I embraced and the other we stayed away from. Mm. <laughs> Did we know to do that? No. But in talking, we found out that one had received the vaccine and the other had not. And we automatically stayed away from the one who had not without even having knowledge that they had not. You don't think you need the anointing? But it's the anointing that makes you unstoppable. So I need you to understand that his power, he said, it says, recover sight to the blind, to send forth, to send forth as deliverance those who are oppressed, who are trodden down, downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. That means that's catastrophes and mishaps. So his anointing comes into your life and it's unstoppable to break yokes, have the power to break yokes and to do unheavy burdens. Isaiah 10, 27 says it defines the anointing as the burden removing yoke, destroying power of God. And that's why you got to strive to protect your anointing. Yes, the anointing is literally God on flesh doing what flesh can't do. It's God resting on human flesh, performing and doing that which flesh cannot do. It's the super being connected to the natural, bringing about supernatural things. The Bible says, for the last thing I want to tell you, though, in Acts chapter 38, describe the impact of the anointing on the life. And ministry of Jesus. The Bible says, talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Now remember, as I'm reading this, Jesus told his disciples that he's talking to us. And we're going to do greater works than these. Because he's going to his father. And so it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And with power. And he went around doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him hallelujah and so this powerful verse reminds us that jesus is a doer of good that the affliction and sickness come from the enemy not god and that the anointing is what removes the oppression so i want you to remember that you are unstoppable and is the anointed it is the anointed of the almighty god that's operating in your life to help you. The anointing brings about his presence. So you ought to be able to feel God wherever you go. And he will show up. If you open, when you open your mouth, he'll show up when you take a step. He'll show up and after he shows up, he will break some yokes, the things that were hard and bothering you, the things that were holding you back, the things that were warned against you. The anointing will destroy all of that and allow you to have free course and free reign. And he's going to do it for his purpose because God loves to see people get blessed. He loves to see people get delivered. He loves to see people change. He loves to see people get healed. He loves to hold people up at trophies as trophies and say, look what I'll do. Look what I did. God said, look what I did. When people look at you and when they look at me, you, we can say, look what God did. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone that's listening in their living room and then in their special space, wherever they are. I pray right now that your anointing 
will go and arrest every situation. <clears throat> moving their lives, moving their hearts. Cause your presence and your power and your purpose to start formulating in their lives. God, where they have problems and issues and depression and worries and they are undecided. Give them clear. Give them a clear vision. Open up their eyes that they may be able to see your glory. And see See your healing. See your deliverance. Experience your peace and your love and your kindness. Give them direction. Give them the wherewithal to stand. Keep their hope alive. Don't let them fall by the wayside. Lord God, hold them up. Because you're able to keep them from falling and, present, and to present them faultless. Oh, Jesus, thank you for resting and ruling and abiding in us. And now, Lord God, as we move from this place of worship, this time of serving and worshiping, honoring you and fellowshipping, bring us back on the appointed time. God, let everyone under the sound of my voice make up in their minds that have not been vaccinated that they will go. And those of us who have been, give us a word to encourage by love, through love, encourage others to do so. Lord God, if we can, 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 can vaccinate our families and our communities, it will just bleed on over and help us to be able to move forward. Now God calls us to rest in you and to trust in you always. And God, we just thank you and we praise you this time with you and this time with each other in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name amen God bless you and you may go in peace hallelujah